you must be here for the video games, or maybe you're here just because you're into technology. Well, we have all that and more, because this is The Save Point. You must be here for the video games, or maybe you're here just because you're into technology. Well, we have all that and more, because this is The Save Point. Hello, Mom at the University, and welcome to The Save Point, your number one source for all things gaming. I'm Katie. And you can call me John. And in today's episode, we'll be serving up some Steam, Sega, and Nintendo news. We also have our own bonus features, uh, a game review, Can You Save Fighting Ponies? And we will once again decide, is it worth it? But first, here's my fellow John with your Steam update. Followed by Jess with your Sega news. Let's go! Hey, it's John and it's time for your Steam update. If you're anything like me, you might have played or wanted to play Dungeons and Dragons. For me, sadly, I never got the chance to play, but a game on Steam called Knights of Pen and Paper is a great substitute, without the smell. You know, minus the rules lawyers and that one creepy guy in the back who's just giving you like that weird eye. You see, created by indie developers Behold Studios, it is a fantastic RPG that only cost me five bucks. Money aside, you start the game off by creating two characters. You don't just pick warrior, thief, cleric. You also pick what type of person is playing that character. Yes, it's an RPG within an RPG. You can get certain buffs if your character is a hipster or a jock. It affects the weird meta style that the game is played. The classes are typical, but the strange thing is instead of having 80 different skills, you have four. So there's a bit less there if you're a fan of customization, customizational combat. It's not exactly what you're looking for. Essentially, you use the ability, you use the ability, heal, and an attack. That's all you got. At this point in time, you're probably wondering why I'm saying to play this at all. Why not just play Fallout or Dragon Age? <sighs> You're controlling people playing characters in D&D and the things they say are hilarious. The purely meta-ness of this game makes it worth a few bucks. It starts off with your dungeon master basically saying you've been captured and must escape, to which your group makes fun of the entire situation. The story sets into motion the standard evil guy trying to take over everything and you have to stop him. You can earn new classes and players along the way while doing hilarious side quests. It really picks up after your players have the RPG experience brought into their real world, where, you know, their 8-bit livelihoods are at stake. It doesn't stop the comedy. From the high school to the amusement park, they battle math teachers, football players, and much, much more. It's an interesting little indie game that will at least make you laugh. My problem was the grinding. Grinding is one thing that actually really grinds my gears. I hate it, but hey, you know what? Five bucks in place of dice, books, and finding other people who won't throw a fireball at you isn't bad either. And now we got Jess Rossi with the, with the, seg with the Sega segment. What's up, Save Pointers? Jess here with your Sega News. The Sonic Universe is being redesigned by Sega, who recently introduced their new multimedia project, Sonic Boom, a new TV show, as well as the next game in the Sonic franchise. 
All of the main characters are getting new attire, and the new universe will come with a new storyline for Sonic and his friends. Sonic Boom will be the Blue Blur's first CG animated TV series co-produced by Sega of America Inc. and Odeo Productions. Each of the 52 episodes will consist of two 11-minute standalone stories with action, comedy, and, and adventure as Sonic and his friends save the world. The show will premiere on Cartoon Network in the U.S. during the 2014-2015 season. Sonic Boom, will, the video game, will serve as a prequel to the stories within the TV series and will feature collaborative gameplay. Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy will all be playable in the new game where Sonic and the gang discovers an ancient land. Each character will have their own unique abilities such as Sonic Speed, Tails Flights, Knuckles Strength, and Amy will be equipped with her hammer. The game is being developed in the US by Big Red Button Entertainment for the Wii U and Sanzaru Games for, for the 3DS, both in collaboration with Sonic Team. While keeping traditional Sonic game elements such as speed, Sonic Boom will also introduce exploration, combat, and a new new Ener Beam tether mechanic, providing a new gaming experience for Sonic fans, new and old. This will certainly be a new change for longtime fans of the spiky blue hedgehog, a big change. We'll have to see how it goes when the game is released and the TV show premieres. This has been Jess with your Sega News. Now let's go to a quick break and then Marissa, Sherlock, and I will be back to share our thoughts on the new Sonic game. <laughs> Hey guys, we're back with Sherlock, Marissa, and I, and we're going to talk about the Sonic Boom game. Hold it! You were really going to have this discussion without me? Yes. <laughs> okay, what's he doing here, and who's she? Uh, she's a new challenger approaching, and I'm the genius you have on set. And I'm Marissa! <laughs> well, I'm Ramon. All right. On with the discussion. So, Ramon, what do you think about the new Sonic Boom? Uh, well, if we're talking about the cartoon, it, you know, it has a lot of promise. I like it. It reminds me of those old Saturday morning cartoons that, you know, I loved, like Sonic X, Sonic Saturday Morning, The okay. Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. It just seems like that cheesy, you know, smart out key cartoon that I love watching. Yeah, I love the slapstick humor from those old shows, <laughs> and I would love to see more of that in Sonic Boom. Burn bot! <laughs> The character designs, I mean, they're a little bit weird. Sonic does not look good with an ascot, I have to say. Knuckles looks like he's on steroids. I think Tails looks okay. I mean, I kind of like the goggles. It gives me that Sonic yeah, Riders vibe. Definitely. I oh. think the only one I have a problem with is, you know, Buffles. He just like... <laughs> <laughs> if they want to make him bigger, that's fine. But to make him, like, you know, tower above Sonic, that just looks yeah. a little weird. Can we call him Buffles from now on? Can that be like his official name on set? Yes. Oh, of course. Yes. <laughs> Buffles. I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> My only gripe is with the bringing back Amy. I never liked her as a character. I never will like her as a character. Every time she opened her mouth, I would deliberately throw her off a cliff so I could <laughs> not have to hear her speak. It's like one of those um, kill it with fire type people. Exactly. <laughs> Repeatedly. <laughs> Before it lays eggs. <laughs> exactly. When I played Sonic, when I uh, played Wait. Sonic Heroes, and uh, it would be it was it Team Rose, Team Amy, whichever Team it was Rose. Team Rose. Uh, I remember um, I would often have someone else do that, even though I never played the game before. Uh, I did Team Sonic and Team Shadow, despite how it was hard difficulty. Simply, I wouldn't, so I would not have to listen to the horrible people on Amy's team. Amy was very bad. Uh, cream searching after that. Teddy bear, all the deep, sure. And don't get me started on that cat. I, you can call it a cat. <laughs> Bro, where are you? Big. Uh, it's like, go home, big. Nobody likes you. <laughs> I'll try and close my eyes and go to bed. I just hear his voice in my head calling for that frog. <laughs> but, but he's Duke Nukem. It's the same guy. But he's the most useless character in the entire Sonic franchise. Not to mention Come you on. have. Not to, mention, not to mention you have a voice actor who has done. Uh, much better jobs than um, Duke Nukem. For example, the voice of the main character, uh, Sonic, 
has also voiced Chris uh, Redfield from the Resident Evil series. And he is also most commonly known for being Ezio Auditore di Firenze from the Assassin's Creed series. Yes, he is. And he has done a phenomenal job. Thanks. With him. Any thoughts on the cartoon? Well, I, like, the Sonic game that I have ever played, like the only Sonic game that I've ever played was, I, I'm pretty sure it was Sonic Heroes. And um, that one, it was really fun. I used to always play it when I was mad and I was like fighting things real hard. And I think my favorite part about that game was like the little chows. Aww. I loved like watching them grow Aww. into these crazy oh. little things and having them fight each other and stuff. <laughs> Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, the Chow Gardens. Oh my, oh my gosh. So Sonic Heroes was your first game. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle was my game. What about you? What were, what were your was, first Sonic games? It was definitely Sonic Adventure 2. Uh, Heroes was my first. Hmm, nice. Uh, then I played Shadow, and that sort of did it for me. <laughs> hey, let's add cursing and guns. <laughs> uh, I, like the, I like the idea of Shadow. It was, you could control the story, you could explore the enigma that was Shadow the Hedgehog. But the execution was, was very, a bit... Right. Uh, the vehicles and the guns were... No. Just no. It's like they were trying to be, you know... They were trying like... too hard to make it... I mean, I, it's Shadow, so you needed to have a darker feel to the game, which I think was good. The level designs in and of themselves were a bit spookier, a bit darker, and it, um, it gave it a different feel from the normally uh, bright and vibrant feels that Sonic would have. So when you have these new dark scenes with Shadows, it was great, but now I'm carrying a machine gun and riding a motorcycle. I didn't even know <laughs> what I was playing. <laughs> At least you're not playing card games on, on that motorcycle. Oh, wait, wrong series. Oh. <laughs> Where are we talking about Sonic Boom? <laughs> yeah, that's another thing I want to mention of Sonic Boom. Like, why is everybody covered in bandages? Do they get hurt a lot nowadays and it actually well, shows up? <laughs> well, honestly, imagine what would happen if you tripped at supersonic speed. But um, <laughs> it, I guess they're trying to go for a more steampunk sort of thing. The mm. one thing I really want to, I'm really interested in is how the game's going to work. From what I've seen, A, there's someone other than Sonic being playable. Thank you. Um... And there's four-player co-op, so I'm, I'm interested to see how that's going to work. And the new one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I know you don't like Amy very much, but I do. But the fact that she is playable, I kind of, you know, I approve of the idea just because she ha she's like barely been involved in the other yeah. games. So it's nice to see her come to the forefront. Yeah, I just hope she doesn't talk much. I hate her new voice. She sounds like Minnie Mouse. Oh, oh my God, Sonic! Ew. I want to see the return of SBO. <laughs> I want to see the return of SBO. SBO was my favorite non major character, because hmm. you're not playing a Sonic Tails or Knuckles, it's typically Shadow. And now you have come, Amy coming back. I would, I would qualify her as a minor character. Hmm. Um, but Espio was without a doubt my favorite, and I want to see him explored more too. Hmm. And since it's, it's Nintendo, I doubt there's going to be you know, DLC of some sort. Hmm. But in the future, if, if Sega is going to continue exploring the other characters, I, I would really love to see him to be the next one. Right, the only game SPO really gets to himself, and it's not even to himself, it's Knuckles Chaotix, where it's Knuckles, yeah, Knuckles, Vector, SPO, Charmy. Mm -hmm. And then two other characters that were never seen or cared about again. Yeah, no, and that's like on a very obscure system, isn't it? Yeah, it's on the 30 x It only sold three copies. <laughs> never exactly. Noticed. Exactly, there you go. <laughs> All right, I think that about wraps up our discussion on Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom. So I'm going to go back to under, living under the table. That's where I've been this whole time, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, Bye, Ramon. Yeah. Bye, Ramon. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey guys, Marissa and John here, and this is your Nintendo News. Nintendo posted an announcement on February 26, stating that they will be terminating the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection service for both Nintendo Wii and D Nintendo DS systems. This means that you will no longer be able to connect with others online to play games such as Animal Crossing, Wild World, or City Folk, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, or any other Wii or DS games after May 20th, 2014. The 3DS and Wii U connection service will remain operable, at least until the next generation consoles are released, and you will still be able to play your Wii and DS games with others on a local Wi-Fi connection. John, how do you feel about this? I do not think that this is a very good idea because I've played Brawl ever since it came out and the Wi-Fi connection has been a staple point in it. Without it, like, it just lacks, you know? What bothers me is that not everybody can afford to get the next generation consoles like the Wii U or the 3DS, so they're basically being, you know, cut off from their online friends, which I think is a real shame. Yeah, like people who wanted to play Pokemon um, X and Y, or no, not Pokemon X and Y, Pokemon Black and White, they, like, they'd be essentially cut off from the rest of the world too if they can't afford the new consoles or the new games. No, it's such a pity. Yeah. Anyway. Project M 3.02 was released on January 13th. This latest version of Project M fixes various game bugs and introduces a new way to install and run the game on your Wii, the Project M Launcher. Other additional features include support for SDHC cards larger than 2 gigabytes, a news ticker that will display current news for Project M, which will update if your Wii is connected to the internet, the ability to update and patch both the launcher and your version of Project M, and faster and more reliable file loading. Also coming soon is the ability to change from a full code set to a Wi-Fi code set in the launcher. Be sure to check out Project M and download it to your Wii's. One more Smasher has been confirmed for Smash Bros. 4 to celebrate the release of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Diddy Kong will be returning to the Smash Bros. stage. Diddy Kong has been made more flexible, giving his attacks more reach. His twin rocket barrels will be able to launch at a more horizontal trajectory but will also come off if struck by an opponent. In addition to new Smashers, some new items are being introduced in Smash Bros. 4. This, these include items such as the Beetle, the Fairy, the Hokotate ship, a newly redesigned home run bat, the Steel Diver, and the X-Bomb. Both the Beetle and the Fairy originate from the Legend of Zelda series. The Beetle can grab opponents and take them away into the air, and the Fairy can heal anyone who has taken over 100% damage. The Hokotate ship, based on Olimar's final Smash from Brawl, is an item that will take off upon being picked up and then drop down back to the stage without notice, exploding where it hits. The home run bat has been remodeled both in design and function. Players use a, using a forward smash while holding it will wind up the bat and swing. The smash is almost always an instant KO. The steel diver will fire torpedoes at increasing speed. Finally, the X-Bomb from Kid Icarus Uprising appears to deal instant damage along two diagonal lines. That sounds really cool. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's all for your Nintendo news. Stay tuned for next week to find out what other updates we'll have on your Nintendo favorites. We're going to take another quick break, but don't start a new game yet, Save Pointers. We'll be right back after these messages. Swag. What are you doing? I'm on HawkTV12.com. HawkTV12.com? Yeah, it's so cool. You can watch all the Hawk TV programs on here and it has the TV guide and... <gasps> Phew, I was close. Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about an awesome game based on a great TV show. The show is My Little Pony and the game is Fighting is Magic. Fighting is Magic is a PC game created by a group known as Main Six. Development of the game began in 2011 between the first and second seasons of My Little Pony and was leaked to the My Little Pony board on 4chan in 2012 after the game had been displayed at the Evolution Championship Series. The game has since been updated in 2013 and then again in 2014, despite Main 6 receiving a cease and desist order from Hasbro on February 8, 2013. Now, on to the actual game. It's like Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, but with ponies! Each of the Main 6 has their own moveset with their own attacks based on their personality. Twilight Sparkle attacks with books because she enjoys studying, while Fluttershy fights with her pet bunny Angel because she loves animals. Each pony also has their own stage based on their character, such as Sweet Apple Acres for Applejack or Sugar Cube Corner for Pinkie Pie. While displaying similar traits to typical fighting games, 
Fighting as Magic is unique in that it features non-human characters as playable fighters, one of, if not the, first of its kind to do so. This game is so much fun, and not just because of the fighting ponies, which are probably the most awesome part of the game. There's so much you can do in the game. The game features a story mode, along with regular, the regular versus mode, in addition to the main six, as well as an extra character called the Sweetie Bot, basically a robot version of Rarity's Philly sister, Sweetie Belle. Each character has their own set of skins that allows you to change colors like you would in any of the Smash Brothers games. The controls are fairly simple, but if you don't like them, you have the option to change them and pick different keys to be your control set. Just click on the Option tab and scroll down to select Keyboard. Fighting as Magic is well developed for an indie game. The movesets and stages are true to the characters and relate well with the show it's based on. Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy may be a bit choppy in their animation and movement, but they're both works in progresses as of yet. The rest of the main six move around very easily, and the animation is great. There are occasional bugs and glitches here and there, all of them very minor, but overall the game runs smoothly. Main Six are still at work on updating the game further, now with the help of Lauren Foss, the creator of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, who joined Main Six's developing team shortly after they received the assist and assist or order from Hasbro. Since the game has been released, you can find downloads anywhere on the internet, either by searching on YouTube for any videos with links to the game, or you can go straight to Google. If you like fighting games, then definitely download Fighting is Magic to your PC. Well, that wraps up this review. Now let's throw it over to Chris, who will answer the age-old question, is it worth it? In the meantime, I'm going to go play a few rounds. Hey, Save Pointers. Now that we've dug ourselves out of all this snow, welcome back to Is It Worth It? On today's episode, we will be going over the newly announced smartphone from LG, the LG Flex. You know, this new state-of-the-art smartphone will be releasing on mobile carriers AT&T, Sprint, and T-Mobile. So, sorry to all you Verizon users. I mean, it's not like you don't all have iPhones already. Well, let's get down to business. Coming in at a whopping 300 US dollars with a two-year contract or 617 US, 72 US dollars without a contract, the G Flex houses a Qualcomm's latest 2.3 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 800 chip. Whew. And an Adreno 330 GPU and two gigabytes of RAM. So expect a compact little speed demon in this phone. The G Flex arched layout certainly is a head turner, but it's also meant to enhance the mobile experience in a number of ways. Viewing angles are far superior on here than a flat phone, producing a wider sense of depth to accommodate multiple viewers. So for all of you viral video people out there, this phone just makes it easier for you to share your passion with others. Not to mention, it reduces glare in the brightest of environments. Call quality is also enhanced as the design was set up to match your face and bring the microphone closer to your mouth for clearer voice output. Now, is it sturdy and will it break easily? Well, the media has already dubbed it the Wolverine of smartphones and granted it's nowhere as near indestructible as the adamantium infused mutant. The, hand, the handset is constructed to sustain heavy bumps and scrapes. It's reinforced with a resin coating, which is commonly used on cars to stave off scratches. And now, don't fall into the impression that the G Flex can withstand an incision from Rambo's handmade knife, because super sharp objects can cut deep through the protective layer. But it's strong enough to handle a set of keys or 80 pounds of pressure. Now, for all you heavy phone users who constantly have to worry about your battery dying and you missing the latest trends on Twitter, there's nothing to be worried about. Equipped with a 35,000 milliamp hour cell, the G Flex packs enough juice to get, to get you through most of the day on heavy use and close to 24 hours during moderate engagement. That is a little bit more vitality than the One Max, the Galaxy Note 3, and the Lumia 1520. Having a low res display obviously plays a huge part here. This is where the G Flex shows its few weaknesses. LG decided to go with a resolution of 720p rather than the typical 10, 1080p or the retina display of other smartphones. Also, the phone is pretty big and the, pr the price tag is even heftier. And finally, because of its curved shape, the key, the key placement is just really awkward for texting and texting just becomes a task itself. So I'm going to ask you, John, mm -hmm. do you think that it's worth it? OK, first of all, I like the idea of that battery life mm -hmm. because I'm, you know, I'm like, this is what I have to deal with. And I got to tell you, this dies 
within, I want to say, like five hours of me being at yep. school. Yep. So I have chargers hooked up everywhere around <laughs> campus. You don't know about them, but they exist. <laughs> and that's how I get through my day. Yeah, that 35,000 milliamp cell, that, I think it was 35,000. If, mm -hmm. if not, 3,500, that's still, that's still plenty of time. 24 hours of 24 just, hours straight. You know, you don't need to charge your phone. Mm -hmm. That's just ridiculous. Um, and also, they said it was, it was pretty sturdy, too, because mm -hmm. you know, it can withstand up to 80 pounds. Oh, yeah. and, and like keys. I was saying, this is my second one. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> because I dropped it, and it smashed on a floor in my bathroom. Oh. That's, ha that's what happened. Yep. Like, honestly, if I'm going to shell out $300, $400 on a phone, it had better be able to take just a tiny drop in my bathroom. Mm -hmm. And the new phone sounds great. Now, the one thing that I do like is the curve shape, as they were saying before. Mm -hmm. It's better for phone calls. Yeah. And I'm one of those weird people who actually does <laughs> call people. Yep. So they're bringing the phone back to phones. Yeah. Um, but one thing with that that I don't like, I mean, with, I guess both of us, we're wearing, you know, pretty skinny jeans and stuff. Yeah. And I know that, you know, a mm -hmm. couple of women and girls, they wear even tighter jeans. So having that uh, curved, curved shape bulkiness to it, mm -hmm. do you think that it's like, do you think that it's worth it to have, to carry around like, I guess uh -huh. a separate bag or something to hold the phone in? See, I'm one of those weird people. I guess it's because I came from the generation of like the Game Boy, yeah. where you had like 18 batteries with you. Yeah. And I'm fine with just throwing a bunch of stuff in my like <laughs> pants, but mm -hmm. I think it's probably going to deter, deter a lot of people just because mm -hmm. of the sheer size of it, and they're just like, eh, whatever. Yeah. But the fact of the durability, the fact of the phone, and the price bringing tag. back the phone aspect, I mean, and the I mean, price, the price tag. tag is kind of kind of hefty, but like mm -hmm. now, like you look at all these phones out there and. What phone isn't three like minus three hundred dollars? This is definitely up there. Not that, not that. <laughs> it's, it's almost there. Yep, yeah, but um, with a plan. It's yeah, yeah, there. of course, with a plan. If you don't have a plan, forget about it. You're going to mm -hmm. be selling your car away. Pretty much. <laughs> um, yeah, but to enhance the call quality, the the curved shape is. I'm liking that. That's and then they're also kind of dropping texting a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's that's another thing I wanted to touch on. Like, yeah. how do you think that the touch screen is actually going to work because of its curved shape? I know okay. they said that it's easier to um, it's easier to see in like bright mm -hmm. light and stuff. And I know that I get this glare all the time. Yeah. But do you think that the curved shape for texting and playing games and stuff? Here's how it will work. Since I actually have my phone as like an idea, mm -hmm. you, this, the days of this are mm -hmm. going to be over with that phone. It's going to be all texting from here, which actually makes texting while doing most activities, like driving, don't do it, is, it's gonna make it really difficult. That's true. And that's probably going to be something to deter a lot of people from going out for this phone. Just the ease of texting, because mm -hmm. how it is is everyone basically treats it as a keyboard instead of how it was before where you had to dial back in. Yeah. So now it's kind of like they're really bringing the old school aspects to the phone while trying to improve those old school aspects, and we'll see how it goes. Yep. I mean, for me personally, I think I'm going to stick with this. I really like just a nice, mm -hmm. not, not too bulky, just slip in my pocket, easily accessed. No texting True and there. driving, though. But um, uh -huh. yeah, I mean. Well, I think that's about all the time we have for today. So let's head back over to our host for the rest of our show. That'll do for us today, Safe Pointers. You can save your games now. We'll be back next week. But until then, keep on playing, because this is the, the Save, save Point. point.